our constituencies. That is what responsible, supportive and resident focused administrations do. Unlike the opposition, we have to set a legal and realistic budget which is based on consultation with our residents. And I would, if I may, Mr Mayor, like to say a big thank you to all our library staff, all our friends groups and the TUs who, while we've been doing the consultation which closed on Friday the 13th, have supported us and we've actually reached this agreement of which everybody seems to be quite happy accepting you to be part of the Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I've got a terrible cold and I've been sitting here and I'm sweating and I thought you can make a real saving in this council by turning down the heating in this chamber. Well, Mr. Mayor, then I realised it's not the heat coming from the radiator. Oh, Phil there, I think for over 10 minutes, I couldn't understand what he was talking about. <laughs> he really couldn't. He was misquoting Alistair Darling, Ed Balls, oh, and I'll give him, I'll give him quote. Never quote. Never quote. Never quote. So, Mr. Mayor, I want to understand and unequivocally recommend this budget. I'm proud of what this council's done in the last three years. And I am proud of it. I'm proud of our leader, I'm proud of our executive, and yes, the party over there. I'm proud of my comrades who are surrounding me here. Look at the block vote that we've secured on this side, Jeff. Look at the block vote. Look at what the people of Wirral are voting for. Look at this side of the house, the chamber, I'm sorry. Uh, look at this sign, and it answers what the people of Wirral think, Jeff. It answers what the people think. And I would like to take it to task on one thing, and I still chuckle about this, Jeff. The Tories. Excuse me. I'm speaking there. <laughs> Jeff, you're actually a, a, the, the Tory leader who believes Adolf Hitler was a socialist of the state. I still chuckle about that. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, this, this budget is progressive. My comrades have spoken eloquently about what we've done, and we've come a long way in the, the, the last three years. And I believe the people of Wirral, this May the 7th, and the people of the country are going to return a Labour government. We're going to get an even bigger representation on this side of the chamber after May the 7th. The, the, the Lib Dems, I'm sorry, will get annihilated as Pat said over there in May, nationally and locally, I think. And Alan Duncan, the head of the Tory party, said two weeks ago that the Tories have become an irrelevance apart from the South. I challenge the Tories, they've become an irrelevance on Wirral apart from the West coast of Wirral, Mr. Mayor. They've become an irrelevance and the people are speaking and just look at our side of the chamber over there. I, I fully commend this budget. I think it's progressive and we've hit the, all the right buttons after the £151 million that we have stripped from this council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That the first cohort who, who stood up, we have three speakers left, that by chance they all happen to be uh, Labour councillors. So I'll take those three and then I'll, I'll ask people after those three spoke to, to speak again. If there are a couple more speakers today, the Conservatives or, or the Dems, Dave, and anyone else? Okay, so we'll take those four, uh, and they are Stuart Whittingham, Tina Johnson, Adrian Jones, and now. Uh,
Tony Butters from Ellis was being spirited, seeking to put the safety nets to the right on by the most disadvantaged in our society. For example, the discretionary housing payments, which their own governments tell us is there to, to support disabled people that we have had bedroom tax. This advance is also responsible by rendering the council's reserves a Tory party for addressing more than deadlines rather than the council's ability to respond to emergencies such as council funding or bad bad winters. I also find it ironic that I understand the views of you turning in car parking charges. I'm proud to be part of that administration as I listen to and talk to not only about protestants and businesses, but also the, the all party screening review on car parking. That's what I've all about proposals, not as not spot to tomorrow's chips. Not spot tomorrow's chips are going to be back to. Also, what is not so clear from the 20 members of Car Park is that the 240,000 pounds on top is on top have our own proposals to get back from the over half a million pounds. Economic Because 
whenever fewer officers have to grapple with the, the, the mess that their government has left, um, they have the beggar's belief that they want to talk about less uh, 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 trade with our councillors. Uh, and Andrew, the really latest bit of particular there, uh, he made the point that we are not going to leave our children with debts they can't repay. Andrew, when you were in power in 2010, didn't you borrow 9 million <coughs> Our real children are going to be repaid for the next 25 years? Yeah! And now, the third the opposite, Trotto, a smoker did us, um, presented for public consumption, uh, consumption you can have a slight of brain, that wills reserves can be plundered, that is nonsense, but cash can be found in this budget that won't impact on the next budget, of course it will, that money that is waiting its time, its spending, it should be ordered <coughs> to earn interest elsewhere, and you'd have lost us a million quid, wouldn't you? Well, that is clever, isn't it, Jeff? <laughs> but you know, their economic competence really hasn't improved one jot since they left us with a disastrous 17 billion pound black hole. Now, I just want to say, I'm finishing on this, Mr. Mayor, so don't remind me. Either that was the most profound financial incompetence, which they haven't admitted to, or, or it was scorched earth, which is an insult to the people of Wiggle. Which was it, Jeff? You've got an opportunity tonight to admit to financial incompetence or scorched earth. Let me give you a hint. When I raised this very question in our constituency meeting, none other than your chief whip nodded vigorously when I said, was it scorched earth? And then, when I was amazed that he confessed to that, I asked again, he nodded his head again and went out smiling. Which was it, Jeff? Was it incompetence or scorched earth? Here's your chance to own it one way or the other. <laughs>
managing, if you do not move with any extension of ability, the seconders alone will take up 28 minutes of time. So can we keep to time then? Thank you.
certainly suffered from that tonight.
Council's relied on members of the public to report the effective feedback. However, this has been less than successful, as it's currently estimated that 10% of the stock is unlit. Mr. Mayor, they knew in October that the withdrawal of patrols had led to, led to problems, but they chose to do nothing. It's also unacceptable, Mr. Mayor, that we don't properly monitor the work of the contractor. The council don't know if the the lights are being repaired, they just pay the bill. Tonight we have the opportunity to plan properly for the coming year. What will it be? More street like chaos or sensible management of the stock? Listening to Councillor Litt uh, Littingham's uh, contribution, he helps chaos. He relies on LEDs, which we've been asking him to do for two years. But he should know, he should know from his own strategy. The LED programme will only cover 7,000 of the 37,000 street lights that we have on the world. What about the others? Mr. Mayor, the Catholic budget doesn't go far enough in collecting the mistakes they've made since taking care of the control of the okay. They failed on, on living wage, they failed on that dog family, they failed on car family charges, and they failed on street lights. And as we've been pointed out by Councillor Clements, Councillor Watts, they had the opportunity not to also fail on the day's children. Their budgets admit some of that failure, and I acknowledge that fact. Councillor um, uh, Williamson, in her usual passionate style, brings our attention to uh, local welfare assistance budgets and discretionary housing payments. It is entirely wrong in the Conservatives to pick on those budgets uh, which are, are there to uh, protect vulnerable people. Pat Hackett accuses us of silence on these issues. I suggest to him he has not properly listened to what Councillor Gilchrist has been saying, nor has he checked his closing record uh, in these areas. Councillor Sullivan didn't understand it. At least Councillor Jones uh, was listening and paying attention. On the matter of the George Gabriel, uh, uh, leads to my attention. I was waiting for my uh, my brother. George, I'll have to come back to you on that. <laughs> Challenge for Labour is to accept the Liberal Democratic Amendment so we can begin 